this is Pragya Shrivastava and educator on Unacademy. Follow me on Unacademy Learning app will find my many more courses. And let's continue our studies on concrete gravity dams here. Though concrete gravity dams are very stable, but they may fail in different conditions. Let's study about the different modes of failure of a concrete gravity dams. Following are the different modes of failures of a gravity dam. A gravity dam may fail by overturning, sliding due to tension or maybe because of compression. Compression means crushing. Now let's see the condition when a dam can fail by overturning. The overturning of dam section takes place when the resultant force at any section cuts the base of the dam downstream of the toe. And in that case, the resultant moment at the toe becomes clockwise. Clockwise means negative moment is developed. So, for a safety against overturning, the resultant must cut the base within the body of the dam and the factor of safety should be provided so that Fs, the factor of safety, should be equal to Sigma, the writing moment upon sigma, the total overturning moment. Writing moment, that means all the positive moments and overturning moments are all the negative moments. And this factor of safety should not exceed the value of 1.5. That means M O. That means overturning moment should not be more than putting the values here of Fs. What we get Mo should not be more than Mr upon 1.5. Mr being the writing moment. Now let's see sliding. A dam will fail in sliding at the base or at any other level if the horizontal forces causing sliding is more than the resistance available. The resistance is actually provided by friction or maybe because of shear. Shear strength develops at the base if uh, Benched foundations are provided and at the uh, other joints, if the joints are carefully laid so that a good bond develops. Shear strength uh, comes into play because of interlocking of stones in masonry dam. And the factor of safety against sliding for low gravity dam, uh, if I am neglecting shear here, in case of low gravity dams, in that case the factor of safety is actually equal to mu upon tan theta. What is mu? The coefficient of static friction with its value varying between 0 0.65 to 0 0.75 and tan theta is the sliding friction which is actually equal to sigma h upon sigma v minus u. For safety, FOS factor of safety should be taken more than 1. Now let's see the factor of safety against sliding for large dams. In large dams, we are going to consider the effect of shear as well. Here, what we see that this SAFF, which is actually known as shear friction factor. 
should be equal to mu sigma v minus u plus b q upon sigma h. Here uh, figure b q actually also appears. What is b? b is the width of the joint and q is the shear strength of joint which can be taken as 14 kg per centimeter square. The shear friction factor is actually taken as sometimes 1.5 or maybe 3 or maybe 4 depending upon the loading conditions as mentioned in the IS codebook IS 6512-1972. Now let's see the failure of your, your uh, structure due to compression or that is crushing. A gravity term may fail by the failure of its material and get crushed. This occurs when the compressive stress is produced is more than allowable stresses. The normal stresses at any point on the base here you can see is actually equal to direct shear stresses plus the bending stresses the direct stress is actually the vertical stress normal stress that is v on area of b b cross 1 Considering it to be of unit length. Now let us find out the bending stress. Bending stress is actually equal to plus minus m y upon i. Which is actually equal to v multiplied by e upon 1 by 6 b square. Which comes out to be equal to plus minus 6 v e upon b square. So what we get that the normal stress at toe is actually equal to v upon 6, 1 plus 6 e by b and the normal stress at the heel is actually equal to v by b, 1 minus 6 e upon b. Obviously, the normal stress at toe is actually the maximum stress that may be that may develop for safety this maximum stress should be less than f f that is the maximum allowable compressive stress of the foundation material so from that what we get this relation for our structure to remain safe we have v upon b multiplied by 1 plus 6 e by b is less than f. Now let's see the failure due to the tension cracks. Masonry and concrete are weak in tension. So dam should be designed so that no tension is developed anyway. The normal stress at heel that we have just now found out is actually P at heel is equal to V by B multiplied by 1 minus 6 C upon B. Therefore, what we see here when E is more than B by 6, the total normal stress at heel will be negative. That means tensile stress is there for no tension to develop. E should be less than B by 6 that is resultant should lie within the middle third. Now let's see the effect of tension cracks. Because of tension crack the uplift pressure increases so that the net downward vertical force that is actually called the stabilizing force reduces. The resultant force gets shifted more towards the toe. And so the crack increases and the resulting in reduction in the base width. And the process actually continues and finally 
this leads to failure of your gravity dam in compression. Now, if you need to carry out the stability analysis of gravity dam, I have uh, written here in the point wise steps that you should follow. First, consider unit length of dam. Second step, work out the magnitude and dimensions of all vertical and horizontal forces. Third step, find sigma phi, sigma the total vertical forces and sigma h, the total horizontal forces. Fourth step, determine the lever arm of these forces above the toe. Fifth step, the determine moments of these forces about the toe. Sixth, find sigma m. Seventh step, find out the location of resulting force by determining its uh, distance from the toe, which can be calculated by x bar is equal to sigma m upon sigma v. Next step, find out eccentricity E of the resultant R. E can be found out by E is equal to d by 2 minus x bar. Next step, check for tension crack, which we have just now learned about it, that if E is less than d by 6, then your structure is safe for your tension crack. So, find out the value of B by 6 and compare it with B. Now, determine the vertical stresses at the toe. And uh, PV is actually equal to sigma V upon B. 1 plus minus 6, 6E upon B. Now, determine the maximum normal stresses. Next step. Find the factor of safety against overturning, which can be found out by sigma stabilizing moment upon sigma resisting moment. Add all the positive moments together and add all the negative moments together here. Now determine the factor of safety against sliding. Sliding factor is actually equal to mu sigma v upon sigma h for low height dams and for uh, high dams, we, we, we have to find out the shear friction factor which is actually equal to mu sigma v plus b q upon sigma h. Now, if all these are found safe, then your structure is safe. So, these are the steps. I have written it in uh, 12, 13 steps are there. And you can easily do your calculation work. Just remember these steps. Very easy. Go through this lesson. And uh, we'll have to uh, do some examples. Solved examples. To understand how we are going to attack the problems. Which may come from this portion. Till meanwhile. Keep studying. Stay focused. Go through this lesson properly, a very important part from your exam point of view. So, go through it properly and have a nice day.